Civic plan may fair and stranger in one of these. Oops. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good, good to see you all this morning on this uh, wet, snowy kind of day. Some of you made it out. We're glad to see that. Uh, I'll try to remember every time to say that we are New Macedonia Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. I do forget that. Uh, I was glad to see all of you that did make it there. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and open with a song. I'll try to get to that, Rachelle. He's trying to find it. What's that? I didn't think it was in any of these books here. No, it's not in this. It's not in this red one, but it, it's in some of those other blue ones. If not, that's fine too. We, we'll be able to find it. I'm sure it's in some of the, some of those other little books. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do 164. Let's open with 164 in the red book, and then uh, we'll try to get to that one a little later on today. 164. 164. 164. Everybody sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of Savior's side, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of Are they white as snow? Are they washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride and be washed in the blood of the Keep praying for Buddy. I think he's doing better, but not, not still not breathing like he should, and not being able to get breath. Buddy message said, "Pray for me and my family." Who's that? Buddy Wilson. Buddy, uh, yeah. Keep keep him and his family in your prayers. William always asks. Yeah, William always asks prayer for him. Pray for Dave and Josie. We haven't seen them in a long time. Have talked to him a little bit here and there. Me and my family that's had some. Dexter and his family. He said, "Me and my family." Of course, I, I believe I said. Uh, 
told you a week or two ago that I have shingles again. This is the second time I've had shingles, and uh, I think it's getting less on me now, though. It's uh, not as painful and not as itchy and stuff, but uh, it's getting better. But keep me in, Terry, and our family's in your prayers. Uh, pray for uh, Lucy Mays and Nancy Combs and uh, Joyce Smith. Uh, pray for C.A. and his family. <clears throat> uh, pray for uh, uh, Truman and his family. And I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting people. Geneva, William. Yeah, Geneva. Pray for Geneva and her family, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, as, uh, as mentioned before, as uh, Brother Dave mentioned one time, uh, when you're saying your prayers, just think of who normally sits around you and uh, keep them in your prayers. Keep them all in your prayers. Uh, John and Faye, of course, another, another couple of people we need to keep in our prayers. Uh, the old and firm, the uh, widows and the widowers, keep them all in your, in your prayers. Has anybody got a special prayer request? Yeah. Yes, I do. I, like I said, my children have a little more specific uh, prayer request. I've had three families that have had the COVID, and they're doing okay, but Casey still doesn't have his smell and taste back. So, man, I, kids, you can't work until they got it sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Pam has got tested again. She doesn't have it. Huh? Pam was tested again. She doesn't have it. Okay, good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, ma'am? Charlie and Jeffrey. Who? Charlie, my first cousin, Charlie and her husband, Jeffrey. Okay, keep them in your prayers. in the country. All right. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my old partner, she uh, fell off the ladder, broke her leg. Who was that? My old partner at work. Oh, yeah? She broke the top of the ladder, broke her leg, oh, just boy. below the kneecap. Okay. And she's going to be off like four to six months. Wow. She had surgery last Thursday. So keep her in your prayer. Sure, there'll be a lot of pain involved in that. Yeah. My ex by the way, my girl. All right, anybody else? Pray for Janet and Mike, then. Keep them in your prayers. Yes, ma'am? Uh, pray for Jamie. She has COVID. Oh, Jamie does? Okay. Or keep her in your prayers, yeah. Anybody else? Anybody got a silent request on their heart? God knows your heart. He knows your heart. We don't always have to speak him. He just tells he does tell us to ask. But that's to ask him and not ask us. Don't have to ask us. Uh, go ahead, Dexter, and then open us in prayer. Most kind Heavenly Father. Father, we just thank you for gave us enough health to be here today, Father. Just, you heard all those prayer requests. I can't remember all of them, Father. And I know, uh, I know you and your great wisdom can remember each and every one. And I know everything is done in your will, Father. But Father, we'll ask you if you'll send down your, your, your hands on this church, Father. And just bless it. Bless all the officers thereof. Bless Randall that when he comes into the stands, Father, that he may give the flock a good message, Father. If just one person could hear this and be safe, Father, it'd be worth all that we do. I know there's some inclement That's weather this morning. We just ask you to take care of the ones, Father, that couldn't be here, that can't get around. I know that people watching on these videos and stuff, we just ask you that all of them that sent in prayer requests that you answer those. Again, just bless our country, Father, as we come into this new, uh, new president, Father. Let's just hope that You'll take care of our country, Father, and hopefully just not let it get any worse than it's getting. Amen. And again, all those people with COVID, Father, we just ask you to send them, them a little blessing on them, Father, and help them to recover. Uh, we just ask you, uh, we just thank you, Father, for loving us. We thank you for dying on the cross for us. We just thank you for everything you do for us, precious Father. Yeah. But most importantly, Father, we ask that you send down your saving hand on the lost and undone father just trouble their hearts trouble their minds till they can't rest until they receive you as their personal savior watch y'all watch y'all reaching every person here father just just help us everyone father to live better to you father to uh just just to learn to know you better to have a closer relationship with you precious jesus all these favors i ask in your precious precious son jesus amen amen also, uh, I did want to remind you to keep Elsie uh, Turner in your prayers as well. And uh, I see uh, Dale Tondra not here, and Jimmy and, uh, 
and the little man, Brody's not here. Keep them all in your prayers, all their families. And uh, as at this time, we would normally take up the collection, of course, but we're not going to do that right now. We're still going to have you send that in to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. Thank you again for what you've given. And if you want to go to a special particular place, if you don't, it'll just go into the church, general church fund, but uh, put in the... If you want to put it in the church fund or the, or the building fund or the ladies club for missions for Sunday school, whatever, mark it as such. Again, thank you for what you've given and what you will give. May the Lord richly bless you for that. You going to sing this with me? or I'll give it a try. Did you find it? Two, two different books, same. hopefully. They yeah, got same, I don't know if they're the same words. But. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if they got the same words in them. Social distance? Yes. No. Wait, well, I was looking at the wrong page. No wonder. It didn't look at all like the same words. Well, I'll tell you what, I sure can't go with you. Well, I'll start saying different words. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the same. I am a poor wayfaring stranger while traveling through this world of war. Yet there's no sickness, no toil, nor danger in that bright world to which I go. And I'm going there to see my father, and I'm going there no more to roam. I'm only going over Jordan, I'm only going over home. I know dark clouds will gather Beauteous fields lie just before me, where God's redeemed their vigils keep. And I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. I'll soon be free from every trial. My body asleep in the old churchyard. And I'll drop this cross of self-denial and enter on my great reward. I'm going there to see my classmates who have gone before me one by one. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. Yeah. <coughs> Go ahead and your song, Dexter. And Sing a, a song or sing one or for the congregation or whatever you want to do out of the book, whatever you want. Come on up here and just leave them up here. There's a lot of them in there. Yep.
says it's trying to recover it. That's actually never happened before. <coughs> trying to reconnect. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll do something else here then. My throat's a little raspy, but we'll see what we can do. Anybody got one they want to sing? We're here. Go to 359, we'll try that one. I might start it over. 359. <laughs> 359 at the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, when I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. Was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in. When Christ the mighty maker died for man the creature sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Myself away, tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Do you want to try that song you're going to sing? I don't think you're going to need two books, though, are you? Probably not. I'm just using one. Okay. Oh, no, I can't see very well anymore. I might need two yeah, of them. I don't know if two of them help you any better. You think not? Probably not. 
On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday So despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown in the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and to pardon and sanctify me So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged Exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross. I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday. To my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. All right. Go ahead and open uh, your Bibles up to Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Genesis 3, 5. And we'll talk about uh, being open-minded or, or uh, whether you should be open-minded, whether you shouldn't be open-minded. 
or at least, at least in which instances you should be open-minded and shouldn't be. Because the world does tell you to be open-minded. They, they say don't go through life with blinders on. And uh, they say expand your mind. Open your eyes and open your ears and don't be closed-minded. That's what the world tells you. The world says that the dictionary gives us some, some synonyms for open-minded. is unbiased, unprejudiced, accepting, nonpartisan, neutral, non-judgmental, non-discriminatory, objective, tolerant, liberal, broad-minded, flexible, impartial, and persuadable. That's an interesting one, persuadable. Now, I'd agree with some of those. I'd agree with some of those descriptions. And I would also agree that we don't need to be closed-minded about all things. Uh, and there are advantages to being, uh, to some kinds of knowledge. And that's, what, and that's what the whole thing about is, whether you get knowledge, what kinds of knowledge you get. But then, in some cases, as the old saying goes, ignorance is bliss. Because there are some things that we just don't need to know. There are some things that, uh, that we're just better off not knowing. There are things that God keeps even from the very elect. And as the Bible makes it clear that no one, no one, uh, even the angels in heaven know the day or the hour of Jesus Christ's return. Amen. No one does. And, and we ourselves, you know, there's a lot of things that we don't know. We don't know as, as humans. There's lots of things we can't look into tomorrow. The Bible says in James 4.14, it says, Whereas you know not. What the morrow, what may be on the morrow. So we don't know what will be tomorrow. We don't know. So lots of things we don't know. We cannot attain to anything to any of the level of God. We can't get in, in that at all. In Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And what it all boils down to is this. There is good knowledge and there is bad knowledge. And uh, we'll talk about that a little more a little later. But when we are babies, when we're, when we're just small babies, we know. We, we think in what's called concrete thoughts. We know things like we know we're hungry. Uh, we know we're cold. Or we know we're tired. Or we know that uh, we're in some sort of pain. And there are things that we do know. Uh, we know we know love, of course, because of our, of our parents. And, uh, and uh, we know dependency. Those are all good things. Those are good things. And as we get older, our thinking becomes more abstract. Uh, we begin to reason. Uh, we begin to have ideas and designs on things. And we, unfortunately, we now do learn things. We do now do know things that we're better off not knowing, like hate and jealousy and, uh, and envy and uh, uh, lust and, and evil. Our innocence that we enjoyed as, baby, as babies gives way. It gives way to sin and gives way to guilt and, and other problems. We can through the Bible, but we can trace when this all happened. We can trace when that tide changed and when the evil entered through knowledge into the human race. God created man perfect in every way, in uh, body and spirit, and he provided everything for Adam and Eve. He gave them everything they needed. He, he nourished them, he nurtured them, and just like the babe, uh, depended on his mother, they trusted. They loved God, they depended, and they trusted God for all, everything, for all the gifts they received. Uh, God kept them daily, every day, with every, with every physical thing they needed, with everything that they needed. And, you know, God gave them free will, as I've talked about many times. But now the Bible doesn't tell us how long... Adam and Eve trusted and believed God and, and, and let God provide for them. It doesn't tell them that. Uh, it doesn't tell them at what point that they began to question God. It never, it never does exactly tell us that. I mean, what period in time. Uh, but we do know at some point that Eve met the serpent in the Bible, in the, in the garden of the Bible. And, and, uh, and we know that, that, that Eve then was tempted by him to think critically and to have an open mind, to open her eyes, and we'll see what happened there. In Genesis chapter uh, 3, verse 5, it says this, For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, that then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them were both, uh, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed uh, fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. 
Wow. So turn over to uh, turn over to Isaiah chapter forty-two, verse seven. Isaiah forty-two, seven. Adam and Eve and all of mankind would have been better off without that old serpent. The Bible says in Revelation called the devil and Satan and the dragon. We would have been better off without his form of knowledge. We'd have been better off without his brand of open-mindedness. And we'd have been better off with our eyes closed to his kind of weaknesses, to his wickedness, to all wickedness. It seems more and more as the, as the uh, end draws near that those uh, places of higher learning, the, the colleges, the universities, it seems more and more that they seek to open young people's minds to the wrong kinds of things, to the wrong kinds of knowledge, and the wrong uh, ideas. Now, those that have gone there sometimes, it seems like with the understanding and of desire to learn more about God and to learn about salvation, they come out with them, resign to the idea that God is a fairy tale, that God is a myth of some kind made up uh, 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 it, by the by people to in control control the minds of the people now there's a popular saying by those that call themselves intellectual is that that man created God and not that God created man but rather they're just saying that man created him in his own mind now they claim to open the eyes of their students when in reality they cause them to close their eyes yeah. to the truth to the truth of the living God of heaven and earth. In uh, Proverbs 1, 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, this says another place, the beginning of wisdom, but here it says the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And that's, of course, God's wisdom and instruction that they despise. The right kind of knowledge is wonderful. It's perfect and great to have, but the wrong knowledge is detrimental to your spiritual well-being, to your spiritual health. The Bible tells us of two stumbling blocks. It tells us there are two stumbling blocks that the devil puts between two, kind, two different kinds of people. The only two kinds of people in the world, actually, in 1 Corinthians 1.22, it says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, Jesus Christ opened the physical eyes of many, many blind men, many blind people while he was here on earth, but... But being physically blind isn't the only kind of blindness. We can also be spiritually blind. That hymn that we sing a lot of times here in church, Amazing Grace, it says, I once was blind, but now I see. Now, they don't mean that they were physically blind. We can understand that that means it was a spiritual, not a physical blindness. In Isaiah chapter 2, that chapter in, in Isaiah chapter 42 rather is a prophecy of the coming Messiah it's a prophecy of Jesus Christ and what he will do to open the eyes of the spiritually blind and those that are held captive by the devil in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7 it says this to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house I am the Lord, this is my name and my glory, will I not give to another, neither my praise, to graven images. So he's talking he talk about going and releasing them from prison, not real prison, but the prison that Satan has, has got them in. Many are spiritually blind and deaf. Go ahead and turn over, uh, you might have to turn over one page, but I want to go to Isaiah 42, 18. Isaiah 42, 18. Isaiah 42, 18. Now, many are spiritually blind and deaf because they want to be, because they don't want to see their sin, because they don't want anybody to point out their sin, because they can't see the goodness of God uh, and, and the things that He can do for them. Open your eyes and your ears to God. We need to do that. We need to open our eyes and open our ears. God has things for us if we would just pay attention, if we would just listen. I'm, I'm not saying that God, if you're hearing voices, that's probably not a good thing, but God is... Uh, you know, God's a great God, and He's given us this Bible, and you can find all kinds of things in here, all kinds of instruction, doctrine, everything you need in here. In Isaiah 42, 18, it says this, Hear ye, hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf, as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but thou observeth not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. See, that, that plainly says that you can, you can see, but you can still be blind. You can hear, but you can still be deaf. Now, as I said earlier, and I said we'd get a little more into it, there's good uh, knowledge and there is bad knowledge. Uh, the world teaches its sort of knowledge, and that's quite often in opposition or juxtaposed to the knowledge of God. And they teach us 
As the Bible said they would, they teach evil for good and good for evil. Uh, the Bible plainly told us that they would do that, and we can look all around us and see that that's happening all the time. And these, uh, those of them that are considered themselves woke or enlightened are in fact in thick darkness. In thick darkness, and they're blind, they're deaf to the true light and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's the way, that's the way that uh, the world wants you to be. I didn't tell you to turn anywhere, did I? I want you to turn over to 2 Chronicles chapter 30. 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 22. 2 Chronicles 30, 22. And again, we're talking about good knowledge and bad knowledge here. Now, Israel, throughout all of their history, throughout all the history of uh, Israel, uh, they sometimes followed after God, and sometimes they followed after idols. And they worshiped idols, and they rejected God and His, and His laws and His commandments. But the priests, the men of God, the men that were chosen by God to lead the people in the worship of God and teach them about God, sometimes they also went astray, but there were times... There were times when they actually did what they were supposed to do, and they were and they taught what they were supposed to do. They taught as they were instructed to. In Second Chronicles, chapter thirty, uh, verse twenty-two. Second thirty twenty-two says, uh, "And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord, and they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God." Of their father so you see it says the good knowledge of the Lord we know that the knowledge of the Lord is good we know that knowing about God is good we know that everything that God gives you and the knowledge that you can learn and gain from reading the Bible from studying God's word and listening to preachers we know that's all good knowledge that's all good good knowledge turn over to 2nd Corinthians way on the other side of the Bible over to 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 2nd Corinthians 4 3 2nd Corinthians 4 3 King David also was also known as the sweet psalmist because he wrote most of the psalms. And speaking of this good knowledge of the Lord, uh, um, how that he, he's, he's talking about how that God knows all things. And uh, I'm going to read this one to you. You don't have to turn to this one. Just keep go ahead and go to Second Corinthians four three. But King David is talking about in the psalm how that God knows all about him. He knew all about him from the beginning. He knew about him to his end. He knows. He said he goes before and, and after him. And he said this in uh, Psalm 139, 6, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. So God's goodness is so good that we can't even quite understand it. We don't even know how good he is. Why then, why then are some people open-minded to what God can offer, as David was, and others are blinded to the truth? Why is that? Why do some open their ears to what uh, the wicked offers, and they accept that as wisdom and knowledge, but close their minds and their eyes to the God's free gift, God's knowledge, and His free gift of eternal salvation, because that's what that leads to. That fear of the Lord leads to the knowledge, leads to wisdom, and that leads you to salvation. And that's, of course, what we need. That's what we all need as, as a human. We all need salvation because we're a fail. We fail. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, it says this, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, go ahead and turn over, turn over to John chapter 10, verse uh, 21. John 10, 21. John 10, 21. So Satan is the God of this world. He makes that plain. He makes that clear in that, in that uh, verse that Satan is the God of this world and he blinds their eyes. He blinds their eyes and their minds. And though they are willing to be blinded, these people a lot of times are willing to be blinded. They're willing, they willingly go along with the devil. They will, willingly are led by the devil. Those that think they have their eyes open by, uh, by the world, by professors, by teachers that are atheists and agnostics, they have actually had their eyes closed and blinded to the truth. But giving a sight to the blind is certainly symbolic of God uh, opening the eyes of the lost to their sin and their need to be saved. In uh, Psalm 146, 8, it says, The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. 
Now there's an interesting thing here, and that's why I turned to the book of John, uh, where Jesus was healing many, and he was causing people to regain their sight, to restoring the, the sight to people, and giving sight to people that had been born blind. And uh, he was given uh, the, the, the ability to hear uh, to the, to the uh, deaf. So as he was restoring that sight and sound to the deaf, his enemy said that he did these miracles not by God, not by the power of God, but by devils, by through and, through and by the devil. But as I just read there in, in there in, uh, in uh, uh, Psalms, a lot of people knew those scriptures. They knew that God was the one that did that. They knew that. So in John chapter 10, verse 21, it says this. Others said, these are not the words of him that had the devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Not really. He can't. He can't. Turn over, turn back over to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. 2 Kings 6, 17. No, the devil wouldn't open the eyes of the blind. He don't want you to see anything. He wants you to blind as many. He wants to blind as many people as he can. He wants you to be as blind and ignorant about the Bible, about God's uh, uh, wisdom, about God's knowledge as he can. He don't want to open your eyes to God's wisdom. He wants you to be close to it. You know what the devil is called? Lucifer. And you might know this, you may not, but uh, that name means uh, a giver of light or a bearer of light, a bringer of light, but his form of light is false. It's a phony. It's a fake, counterfeit kind of light. In 2 Corinthians, uh, we know that Jesus is a light, of course. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, chapter 11, I'll just read this to you, verse 14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He says he's transformed into an angel of light, which means he is darkness masquerading as an angel of light. He's not an angel of light. He's yeah. darkness. And I, and I just want to give you some evidence of when uh, the Bible says uh, open their eyes. It's not always talking about bringing sight back to a, a physical blind person, uh, uh, regaining their sight. But we can see in 2 Kings that Elisha, Elisha had gotten a word from God that the king of Syria uh, was going to go and he was going to attack the Israelites and the king of Israel in a certain place. When they got to a certain place, he had heard they were going there. When he, they said when he got there, they were going to attack them. So Elisha went to the king of Israel and he told him not to go to that certain place. So when Syria got there and there was nobody to attack, uh, he, he wanted to find out who had, who had said that. And when he found out that it was Elisha, and that he was in the city of Dothan. He said, the Bible says, they sent a great host of men, horses, and chariots to surround that town of Dothan uh, that Elisha was in. Now, when Elisha's servant saw the serious troops surrounding the city, when his servant, when Elisha's servant saw that the, the troops and everything were around, and all the chariots and all the horses and the men of war were all around there, he got very afraid. And he said, uh, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And Elisha answered, said, this is, this is, people quote this quite a lot. It says, Fear not, for they that are with us are more than they that be against that. Wait, let me, let me try that again. I think most people do it better than that when they, when they quote it. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So he's saying, We got more on our side. And he's talking about God and the angels in 2 uh, Kings chapter 6, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So it was time to open, your eye, open his eyes spiritually. He wasn't saying that he was a blind man. The, other, the enemy couldn't see those uh, angels and those, uh, uh, those chariots of fire and those horses. There. He couldn't see them. Why don't you go ahead and turn over, on over to Luke uh, chapter 24. Luke, Luke 24 verse 31. Another example here. It's another example. is in Luke. And, after, and that's after Jesus Christ was crucified. And he had risen from the dead. And they were two that were walking along the road to Emmaus. And Jesus appeared to them and walked along with them. And as he walked with them... They, they began to talk about what had happened there about Jesus. They said, are you, are you new to this area? Have you been around here? Have you heard about Jesus, about him being crucified? And they began to tell Jesus about his own crucif crucifixion. 
And they began to talk about how they were disappointed that Jesus had been crucified because they said they felt like he was the one that would redeem Israel. Now, they had the wrong idea of what he ought to do, uh, what Jesus Christ had, had, had come to do. But Jesus said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Because they didn't understand what Jesus Christ was come for. They didn't understand that he was a spiritual leader. They didn't understand that he had come to save souls instead of come to save physical bodies. Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus began at Moses. He began with Moses and then he went through all the prophets and he talked about how they had talked about him, how they had prophesied about him, how they had talked about what he had come to do and how he was going to be the savior of the world. Not the savior of men's bodies, but rather the savior of the souls. Now the Bible says uh, that they compelled Jesus to eat with them and the Bible says that he took bread, he did take bread, and then he blessed it and he broke and gave it to them and something important happened when he did that. In Luke chapter 24 verse 31 it says, And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said uh, one to another, Did not our, our heart burn with us when he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, so he says their eyes were open. And we know that they weren't, they weren't all blind. We know that their eyes were open spiritually and they could see uh, what he was talking about. And they could see uh, and understand what he meant by those scriptures. Uh, go turn on, look on over in Luke uh, 24, 45. Luke 24, 45. Now the 11 remaining disciples, this is just directly after what we had just talked about, the, the 11 uh, remaining, that was after Judas had betrayed Jesus, of course, and hanged himself. They were together, together in a room. They were together, together in a room, and they were discussing that they had heard that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, and they said that Peter had seen him. And as they spake, the Bible says, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Now they were frightened, they were afraid, and they were scared, and, and, and they were afraid that he was a ghost or a spirit of some kind. And he showed them his hands, he showed them his hands and his feet, and he told them, For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. Now again, we can read in here in this, in this uh, chapter, again, after his resurrection, Jesus ate with them. This time, though, he ate broiled fish and a honeycomb. And the Bible says, And he took it and did eat before them. And Luke 24, 45 says this, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So he, he gave them understanding by, by uh, he opened their eyes to understanding. So sometimes when your eyes are open, your eyes are opening to understand something. But you've got to be careful what it is that you're understanding. Sometimes, uh, you know, the world, as I said earlier, will get you to understand and believe the wrong things. They'll not open your eyes to things, but rather they'll make you believe something is true when it isn't. In Acts chapter 26, verse 15, turn to Acts chapter 26, verse 15. That's why and how our minds should be open to understand the scriptures. That's what we should be open to. That's what we should have our mind open to, our eyes open to, is the scriptures, is the Bible, is the word of God. Not to be enlightened to this world, what thinks enlightenment is, which is actually a tool of the devil to blind your eyes, to blind the eyes of the understanding uh, so that you won't be able to believe, as we, said, as we read there earlier in the Corinthians, we won't be able to believe the words of salvation, of peace and happiness. And that will be forever. That love uh, that God gives you, that peace, that happiness, that's forever. The Apostle Paul, as you know, was a Jew. He said he was a Pharisee. He was zealous, very zealous, zealous toward God, he said. And then he persecuted the church. He persecuted the church and the Christians. And he was on his way to deliver a letter to Damascus that would have the people there in Damascus, I guess the officials, whatever, to release to him Christians that he might bind them and take them to Jerusalem to be tried for preaching for Jesus Christ. Now, he was taking them to be tortured and possibly to be killed. I'm sure a lot of them would have been killed. And that was for preaching and talking about Jesus Christ. But on the way there, we can read the Bible in two different places in Acts, that Jesus Christ uh, that shone a light down around him, and it was so bright, it was such a powerful and bright light that he fell to the ground. And then uh, Jesus spake to him from the light. In Acts chapter 26, verse 15, it says this, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, 
whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things uh, which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan under God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So he said, I am going to, I'm going to open their eyes. I'm going to open their eyes. I'm going to open their mind. I'm going to open their ears so that they can go to the light from the darkness so that they can see the word of Jesus Christ, so they can understand the word of God. Go ahead and turn all your Bibles to what we normally do at the end here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 9 Romans 10, 9. When your mind is open, when your eyes are open, when your ears are open, it should only be to the truth of Jesus Christ. It should only be to the truth of God. It should only be to the scriptures. It should only be to that. It should be to the truth of Jesus Christ. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's what people need their mind open to. That's what they need their eyes open to. That's what they need to put their eyes upon and put their gaze upon is Jesus Christ about the cross, about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that is to the saving of your immortal souls. That's the most important thing to you ever. It's not, it's not to political correctness. It's not to social awareness as the world would have you to believe. That's not what you need to have your eyes open to. And there's nothing wrong with being kind to people. But you don't need to have your eyes uh, blinded by that kind of stuff or any other thing that distracts you from serving or trying to please the Almighty God. Bible talks about a spiritual warfare, and there is. There is a spiritual war going on for your soul. It's going on. It's, it's a, it's a uh, warfare between good and evil. It's between God and Satan. The Bible says that there's spiritual wickedness in high places. There's evil and there's wickedness all over this world. If you're not saved, then the devil is actively... If you're not saved, that is. The devil is actively trying to get your soul. He's trying to win your soul. He's trying to get you to not be saved. He's trying to get you to not pay any attention. He's trying to close your eyes and blind you to, to the Bible, to the words of God, to the truth, to the gospel. He's trying to blind you to those things. If you are saved, he's trying to get your testimony to not be any good. He's trying to make it to where you, uh, when people look at you, they say, well, he's, look at him. He's no good. He's no better than I am. And of course, as I said before, we are no better than anybody else as Christians, but we are saved. That's the difference than us, than, than to lost people. We're saved. We have a Christian liberty. Not that we can go out and sin and do anything that we want, want to do, because we won't lose our salvation if we do, but we will. We will lose uh, treasures that will be laid up in heaven for us. We will be uh, chased, chastened and uh, rebuked here on this earth by God, by the Holy God. We will do that. We will lose crowns that we could be laying at Jesus Christ's feet. So I, I urge you as a Christian to be as good as you can. Uh, but don't try to think that's going to get you into heaven. It won't get you into heaven. Don't ever, ever think that being good is going to get you into heaven. Don't ever think that being doing good works, doing good works is a good thing. Helping the poor, uh, helping people that are in need, praying for people, all those are great, great things to do. But they won't get you into heaven. You need to do those after you're saved and only after you're saved because then you're not doing them for anything. Then it's just something that's going to be burned up. When the Bible talks about the works are tried and burned up, that's all that stuff is going to be tried and burned up, no matter how good it is. It doesn't matter if it's good works, it doesn't matter if it's bad works. If you're not saved, it's going to be burned up. It's going to be destroyed in the fire. And that's a holy fire. But if you're not saved, all you got to do is just follow the advice that you're, that you're given here in the Bible in several places. But we're, we're going to concentrate here on Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Because it does give it in a nutshell here. It says, that Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It's simple, folks. It says, For with the heart... For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever, in verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's easy. I mean, that's an easy, wonderful thing. It's a wonderful gift that God has given us. It's that free gift of salvation that he's offered you. It's 
that free gift that he wants you to have. It's not his will that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And by repentance, he don't mean that all would, would quit being sinners and, and, uh, and be good people. He means that you would turn. Repentance means to turn, and he wants you to turn from unbelief to belief. That's how he wants you to repent. Again, don't get me wrong. I want you to do good stuff. I want you to do best. I want you to be the best person that you can possibly be. But I want you to understand that if you do fall, God will pick you back up again. Amen. All you have to do is just confess your sins to him, and he is just and, right, and righteous to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all Amen. unrighteousness. Not saying he has to re-save you over and over. It's eternal life. And, and as John said, he wants you to believe that you have eternal life. He wants you to know that you have eternal life. You don't, you know, it's not temporary. It's not something that, that God is not able to keep you after he saves you. God's able to keep you. If you're not saved by your own goodness, then you're not kept by your own goodness, folks. Uh, so don't let people mis get you misunderstanding that. You're kept by Jesus Christ. And, uh, and of course, as I said, and, I, and I, I, can't, I can't stress this enough, the good work that you do after you're saved is just laying up treasures for yourself in heaven. And do that. Lay up treasures for yourself in heaven. It's going to be really good for some people in heaven. It's going to be super good for some people in heaven. It's going to be good for everybody in heaven. But you know what? In hell is the same way. It's going to be real, real bad for some people in hell. And it's going to be even worse for some people in hell. I think that's about all I have for today. Thank you for your attention, and, uh, and, and I, just, I just urge you, if you're lost, get saved. Just by belief in Jesus Christ, just believing that Jesus Christ is who he said he was, confessing him as Lord, and asking him to save you. If you have family members that are lost, try to impress on them that time is running out. Time is running out. It doesn't matter if, 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 if you're thinking that the end of the world is going to come, but I think the end of the world is coming pretty soon, but even if it isn't, Time's always running out from you. You know, like the sands of the hourglass, our, our life is going through there. You know, it's, it's, it's going away. I mean, us that have a few years on us can see, you know, it only seemed like yesterday I was a child. You know, and now, you know, now, now I'm in my 60s and, uh, and then time just keeps marching on. It just keeps going on farther and farther. Now, the medicine back there can't believe it, but she's going to be old one of these days. <laughs> she's going to be an old woman here one of these days. And, uh, and it's going to be before you even realize it. Before you even know what's going on, you're going to be, you're going to be old. I mean, it just it seems like a blank of an eye because the Bible said, what is your life? It's but a vapor. It appears for a while and then it's gone. It disappears. That's what our life feels like, you know. That's what it is. But thank God for the wonderful gifts he's given us. Thank you for the many blessings he gives us. Go ahead and close us in prayer. Amen. Well, give your name and everything. We had some new people come on here. Yeah, this is uh, New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky, and I'm Pastor Randall Baker. Thank you. Thank you for watching the videos, and uh, and uh, we'll try to have one on every week. Actually, I will be. Uh, I'll be here next week, but then I'll be gone for two weeks after that in Florida. Uh, but I will have somebody coming here. But uh, thank you for watching the videos. Go ahead and close us in prayer. Our most kind and heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for, for giving us enough help to be here today. And Father, we just, we just, as Randall said, we need to open our eyes to God's good things, open our ears to God's good things, close our eyes to the evil of this world and all that evil stuff, Father. Again, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Bless our church, Father, if it be your divine will, as we know everything is in your will. Just, we just ask you that you give each and every person safe passage to get home, Father. And just, I know we got some bad weather going on. We just, all the people that are watching, Father, we just ask you to bless them. And, and we just, we can only hope, Father, that one person could hear this message today and, and be saved. But if the whole world would be listening, Father, and hear the message, they could be saved there just by paying good attention to it. Romans 10, 9 through 13, Father. Just work with this church father again bless randall and we thank him for his diligent studies and stuff we just we just love you lord we just ask you to help us to love you more and to obey you more and to do more that you ask us to do father and get away from this world and into your world father that's what we just we just don't know how to we don't know how to pray father but we yeah. just do the best we can father just again thank you again all these favors and blessings we ask them your precious, precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See you next week.